Hello and welcome back everyone. In this session, we are going to take a simple example to understand the procedure to perform the explicit analysis. As you can go through the problem statement, here we are trying to simulate the impact of cylinder on the plate. The initial velocity of the cylinder is 100 meter per second and our objective is to check the plastic strain in the component. As of now, with the explicit analysis, one crucial thing that we require is the end time. But for a time being, we are going to assume that we don't have the end time and then we will do some iteration in order to understand how one can decide the end time. For the boundary condition, we are going to simply fix the one end of the plate and for the material, we are going to apply the aluminum alloy nonlinear material for cylinder and structural steel nonlinear material for the plate. This problem, where we are trying to simulate the impact of cylinder on the plate, this is also commonly known as a Taylor test. Now let us go to the ANSYS workbench and see how we can perform the Taylor test. Once we are in the ANSYS workbench, in order to perform the explicit analysis through ANSYS workbench, we can simply double click on the explicit dynamic so that the project will come in the project schematic window. One interesting thing about the explicit dynamic analysis is the solver that ANSYS workbench utilizes to solve the dynamic analysis. Simply click on the model and under the properties here look for the solver. As you can see, currently for the explicit dynamic, the solver has been set to autodyan. So this is the solver that get used to solve the explicit dynamic problem. Now same thing if I check for the static structural, click on the model, then you will see the solver type is mechanical APDL. In interview, they might ask you a question related to the solver that get utilized in order to solve the different different problem. Now let us go for explicit dynamic. Here, our objective is to simulate the impact of cylinder on the plate. Since the geometry is very simple, you can simply go to the geometry and create the geometry or we can simply import the geometry. I have already put this file in the resource tab. So simply you can import the ready-made file. So let us import tailortest.stp file. Double click on the geometry to understand the overall dimension of the components. As you can see, here we have one cylinder and other one is plate. Currently, the ruler is not available over here. So let us go to the view and from over here, click on the ruler. Now you can see, currently the length of the plate is 50 mm and let us try to get the overall sense of the cylinder also. So it look like the cylinder dimension is 25 mm in diameter. Now once you have overall idea about the dimension, let us go to the mechanical window to apply the loading and boundary condition. Here you might wonder, okay, why we are not going into the engineering data? So think about the engineering data is that we can simply create the material in the mechanical window itself. So every time you don't have to go to the engineering data, unless and until you have to put some specific parameter, then and then only it is recommended to go to the engineering data. So simply click on the material and from here itself, we can import the material. So currently, let us say I want aluminum alloy nonlinear material. So you can see here I can see structural steel nonlinear and aluminum alloy nonlinear. Since this material I have used in the previous exercise also, that's why they are coming over here. If they are not available over here, then under the search you can simply type aluminum and automatically you will get the aluminum alloy nonlinear. Simply click on plus button and let us do the same thing for the structural steel also. Let us click on the material to verify that we have the aluminum alloy nonlinear and the structural steel nonlinear material. Simply expand the geometry to apply the material to the component. So as per our problem statement, the cylinder has aluminum alloy as a nonlinear material. Simply click on aluminum alloy and let us do the same thing for the plate as well. Once you have the appropriate material applied, now let us go for the connection. Now keep in mind, we are doing the explicit dynamic analysis. In case of dynamic analysis, under the connection, you will get two things. One is the contact that we have already seen. These contacts are generally preferred where in advance you know which components are going to come in contact. But in explicit analysis, we generally don't use the contact. We have the better option called as an body interaction. So as of now, we don't require this contact. So right click and simply set it to delete. Under the body interaction, you will see that you have the two options. One is the contact detection and other one is the formulation. 
As of now, you can remember that under the contact detection, mostly we use the trajectory and under the formulation, we use the penalty. In the subsequent session, we will also go into the detail about what exactly mean by the trajectory and what exactly mean by the penalty. But as of now, we will just have to remember it. Under the body interaction itself, still we will have to tell that how the interaction is going to take place. So under the body interaction, again, we will get the different different type. So if I expand, currently we have the bonded, frictional and frictionless. Let us begin our analysis with the frictionless contact. Once the connection have been established, just right click on the mesh and perform the general mesh. Keep in mind, for the explicit analysis, we prefer the first order element and the element with the uniform mesh size. Simply click on the mesh and verify that you have the element order as a linear one and the physics preference as an explicit one. Once the mesh parameter have been verified, now let us go for the explicit dynamic. Under the initial condition, we will have to apply the velocity. Simply click on the initial condition and let us go for velocity. Simply press Ctrl B on your keyboard to activate the body selection filter and select the cylinder. Set it to apply and for the vector, let us set it to component. And for the velocity, let us apply the velocity of minus 100 meter per second as per our problem statement. Now again click on the explicit dynamic and we will have to apply the boundary condition as well. Click on the fix support and let us fix the end support of the plate. Once we have the initial condition and the boundary condition, still you can see there is a question mark in front of the analysis setting. Simply click on the analysis setting and here we will have to define the very very important parameter which is known as an end time. As of now, according to our problem statement, it says have fun with the end time. So currently we don't know what time should we put. But always remember, in case of explicit analysis, this time is usually in the millisecond. So for a time being, I will put very small amount of time, let us say 7 e raised to minus 5 second. So this time is very small. We understand that because it is a dynamic event. Now again, let us click on the solution. Let us request the total deformation and from the strain, let us request the equivalent plastic strain. Now right click on the solution to solve the model. As of now, we are not sure whether the end time that we have defined it is appropriate or not. But using the energy summary, we can conclude that one. Once the problem gets solved, let us click on the total deformation and play the animation. Now it looks like our problem have been solved, but still we are not sure whether the time that we have defined, whether it is sufficient to capture the dynamic event or not. Now to understand that, we will have to go for solution information. Click on the solution information and under the cycle you can see, Currently, ANSYS workbench took around 1200 cycle to complete the problem. Now instead of solver output, let us set it to energy summary. Now under the energy summary, you can see the sign color shows the kinetic energy and this color shows the internal energy. So we had the body which has the initial velocity of 100 meter per second. So when we begin our analysis, our body has lot of kinetic energy. But during the impact that all of the kinetic energy will get converted into the internal energy. So you see this is very interesting curve for the impact analysis. There is a continuous drop in the kinetic energy and at the same time there is continuous increase in the internal energy. And this is exactly as per our physical understanding of the problem. Now you can see over the period of time once we reach at this location then you can see these lines are coming out to be straight only. That essentially indicate at this time interval itself our problem has solved and we didn't require this extra cycle. Now let us do one crazy thing. So at this moment of time if you ask any crash engineer or any explicit engineer that if he had to simulate this problem again how much end time he will take then most probably his answer would be 3 into e raised to minus 5. Because from here the curve is straight only so there is no energy conversion happening and your model is already stable. But at the same time, imagine if we would have given the time as 1 e raised to minus 5, then here still the energy conversion is happening. So our results will not be accurate one. Now again, still we are going to do one check. So let us again click on the analysis setting. Here we have given the time as 7 into e raised to minus 5. And what we are essentially interested is in the equivalent plastic strain. 
सो करंटली विथ हंड्रेड मीटर पर सेकंड एंड विथ द टाइम ऑफ सेवन ई रेस टू माइनस फाइव द इफेक्टिव प्लास्टिक स्ट्रेन इज झिरो पॉइंट वन एट एट बट वी नो दैट वेन वी टेक अ लुक ऑन टू द सोल्यूशन इन्फॉर्मेशन वी नो दैट अवर प्रॉब्लेम हैज ऑलरेडी स्टेबिलाइज एट थ्री इन टू ई रेस टू माइनस फाइव सो लेट अस अगेन डू द एनालिसिस विथ द एंड टाइम ऑफ थ्री इन टू ई रेस टू माइनस फाइव एंड वेरीफाई वेदर दिस प्लास्टिक स्ट्रेन इज चेंजिंग और नॉट सो टेक्निकली इट शुड नॉट चेंज एट ऑल बिकॉज एट दैट मोमेंट युअर प्रॉब्लम हैज ऑलरेडी स्टेबिलाइज बट लेट अस डू दैट चेक Once your problem gets solved, let us directly go ahead and click on the equivalent plastic strain. And tada! You can see currently we are getting same equivalent plastic strain. So in the organization also, this is how you should think and this is how you should approach the problem. So from here on, whenever you have the impact test, make sure you are getting the energy graphs like this one. Now let us again go for equivalent plastic strain and play the animation. Let us rotate our model little bit. Currently we are in the true scale so if you want to scale up the model then you can go for let us say 2x and again play the animation again if you want to check the total deformation again click on the total deformation and play the animation so i hope you have understood this problem and enjoy this problem at the same time in the next session we will do the parametric study where we will increase the velocity step by step and see the effect on the equivalent plastic strain so let us immediately meet in the next session